Well, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It's a great honor to be here to chair this uh, panel on Beyond uh, the Kultura Doctrine. Um, I'm not a, uh, an expert on Eastern Europe. I'm a Germanist, and you've heard it, uh, a historian uh, of Europe uh, in general. Um, but I'm completely persuaded that uh, what has happened in the past in uh, Eastern Europe and East Central Europe uh, was of critical importance to European history as a whole. And more importantly, I'm completely convinced that what's happening in the East today is of vital uh, significance uh, to the future of the European uh, Union. So I'm going to be paying uh, very close attention uh, to what is uh, said. We have a very distinguished uh, panel of four uh, speakers from the world of politics, from academe, uh, from the arts, and indeed there are crossovers uh, between those different uh, categories. Um, each speaker, I believe, knows that uh, he must speak for uh, 15 uh, minutes. We will then have, uh, after every, uh, all four speakers have uh, completed, we will then have a general uh, discussion. Um, I will introduce uh, the speakers uh, individually. You've got a very full and helpful uh, notes, um, but I'd like to start with uh, Pavel uh, Kowal, um, who is a, a public figure uh, in Poland, a politician from the Polska uh, Razem Party. Um, editor, uh, very interesting from my point of view, of the new Prometheus uh, magazine. Uh, interesting for me because of uh, ways of thinking about uh, the ordering of Eastern Europe uh, from the past, but also have uh, very current uh, resonances. Um, he's chairman of the EU-Ukraine uh, Parliamentary uh, Cooperation uh, Committee, and he's going to be speaking to us uh, on the subject of the meaning of the Gidrat's doctrine. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation to Cambridge for the conference. And I'm packed today in two hats, one politician, public feature, as you say, and the second is uh, my work in, uh, in the Polish Academy of Science, Institute of Political Studies. And um, my idea for today was to discuss with you about the meaning, about the sense of Giedrich Doctrine. Let's just start from the definition. Jerzy Giedrich, as you collect the basic fact, Jerzy Giedrich himself wrote relatively little. He ordered articles, he was the editor of Kultura, and thus influenced the profile, created the profile, the journal. This was his role. What we call the Giedroch Doctrine was, was shaped on the pages of the journal across the decades. Several regular writers of Kultura played a role in his process. If one was to point to one specific text, a kind of summary, the principles of Giedroch doctrine, it would be for sure Iliusz Miroszewski's essay from 1974, Polish complex of Russia and the ULB area. As a kind, as a kind of informal Today, Gedroch Doctrine is a kind of informal state doctrine. The principle of Gedroch Doctrine operates in the Third Polish Republic. But one would look in vain, in vain for a comprehensive, comprehensive statement along the lines of the, for example, American model of presidential doctrine, state doctrine from any of the Polish leaders explaining what the Giedroch Doctrine means today. We haven't any official statement. We haven't, we haven't any official presentation from any ministers of foreign affairs, from presidents. What is today in a current situation the Giedroch Doctrine. Giedroch was not a professional politician, was not a, was not a senator, 
minister, member of parliament. The key for the emergence of the doctrine of the text was just one of many journalistic, journalistic texts Miroshevsky, rather than a solemn declaration. Yet, today, politicians, columnists, say doctrine of Giedroj. And it's clear what's going on. It's a paradox. Columnists, politicians, ministers say Gedrich Doctrine. Gedrich Doctrine have uh, supporters and many, much more than a few years ago, opponents. And it's really difficult to find in uh, political science, a short definition. What is today? Gedroch doctrine. We have, of course, many articles about the history of Maison Lafitte. We have, of course, many articles uh, about the history of literature in the context of work of Institute Literatsky in Paris, and we have not short definition. What is the meaning of Gedrich Doctrine today? Let's go to the first point, origins, roots of the doctrine. Of course, it was really interesting what say tomorrow Lukasz Adamski about the, as you say, deep roots of Giedrich doctrine in Polish tradition uh, in the uh, uh, 19th century. And the key element for formulation of Giedrich doctrine is, of course, the, the division of Polish Eastern policy in the Piłsudski insurrectionist tradition. It's foundation of the belief that Poland can be safe only if Russia resign its imperial policy. The origins of the Gidry doctrine must be solved in the federal program of Marshal Piłsudski after the First World, World War. Gidry's doctrine applies to the idea of Polish independence understood in the spirit of Piłsudski. In 1971, in article entitled, entitled, entitled Line, Julius Miroszewski, famous columnist of Kultura, wrote, what is the line of culture? Cult, what, what is the line of Kultura. Kultura seeks ways leading in the independence of Polish. Exactly how half a century earlier in 1918. Let's return for the moment of 1918. When asked if Poland is to be ethnic or historical, Piłsudski's political camp answered with historical. This meant a federation with Lithuania, Belarus, and the Ukraine. After the invasion of Bolsheviks and the 1921 peace of Riga, a federation was no longer possible. The Polish elites responded to the Soviet policy towards nations that have came under the authority of the USSR with, the, with a Promethean program aimed at the, su at the subjugated peoples of the USSR. This Promethean program also forms part of the roots of the Giedroj doctrine. The Polish Prometheanism, in addition to altruism, typical of this 12th trend in Europe, had another peculiar 
future, anti-communism, anti-Soviet approach. But the doctrine of Giedroch was born several years later in a completely different political circumstances. The key to understanding the meaning of the Giedroch doctrine is the situation of Poland after the World War II. There was a problem of recognition of the new borders. Institut Literacki, the literary institute, was founded in 1946. A certain continuity was mentioned. The same people who took part in the creation of the federal and Promethean program before the World War II were new in the new circumstances in exile in Paris. In Paris. The important element is the transfer of ideas and the transfer of key person to Paris from the time before the Second World War. The important element is a continuation despite the results, results of the Second World War. Let's go to the next point. Reconstruction of the Gedders Doctrine. We could say that the doctrine is something between a general idea, in this case, the idea of, in this case, it's for, for sure the idea of preserving, preserving the independence of Poland and executive specific political program. Between the political program and general idea, we have a doctrine. Doctrine, according to the traditional understanding of the words, means teaching, like in church, like in sermon. It must, therefore, have a, time, have a timeless value. It must fit various historical circumstances. It must give to possibility to formulate concrete political program in any new circumstances, for example, after the next ele election. The Kiddush doctrine, however, has a purely historical layer. This was crucial at the formative time at the Kultura Circle. This layer consists of three models. models, models. Firstly, the renunciation of Vilnius and Lviv by Poland and thus the Polish claim to the eastern borderlands, the so-called Kresy, and the capital of Lithuania, Vilnius, is the question about Vilnius. Vilnius is, in my opinion, is not a Kresy, it's a capital of the second federal, federal state, of course. Secondly, the recognition of the post-war borders. Thirdly, giving, the, giving up the supper power Miroszewski said, wrote, imperial ambitions. It can be said that after Yauta decision it was decision, decisions, it was abuse, the imperial policy was out of question anyway. But it was not that simple. For Gedroich, recognizing the post-Yauta borders in Kultura Mint running against the majority of the Polish immigration circles in London. There was a real risk of Kultura being boycotted by the Poles, Poles in exile and failing. Another thing, Giedroch had no formal mandate to speak on behalf of the Poles. Still, he put his cards on the table for the first time in the 1915 Two, fifty-two, when he published a letter of so-called Father Majewski openly calling for the recognition of the new borders. It was a few years, I would like to underline. You should think about them. It was really few years after the war. So you can understand the outrage of the proposal to recognize the borders that had been imposed on Poland. 
Giedroyd's approach can be only explained by his strong instinct of political realism. The goal was to avoid at that time of dissolution of the USSR under the influence of national movements and explosion of conflict between Poland and its eastern neighbors. The most important text for the reconstruction of the Giedroyd doctrine was published, of course, was published, of course, by Juliusz Miroszewski, 1974. Um, it's of course the Russian complex, the Russian-Polish complex, and the ULB area. And the key sentence from that articles, article. It's always about the Ukraine, Lithuania, and the Belarus, because the situation in these regions determines, det determines the Polish-Russian relations. The core meaning, the main point of Miroszewski's text was to connect the political line of Kultura with the historical tradition, traditions of Poland. Uh, the First Republic, the Jagiellonian idea, federalism, and Prometheanism. And the key issue in thinking about the Giedrys doctrine is not the Polish attitude to Ukraine, but the key issue, the main problem is imperialism. The Russian imperialism, yes, but also in the historical sense, giving up the Polish imperialist thinking too. It was really important element of the thinking of Miroszewski. Giedroyd's idea therefore concerns mainly Poland, Polish and Russian relations. Many politicians, for example, in Poland say in TV, we are against, for example, Giedroyd's doctrine because we are against to aid, to send, to aid, uh, to aid Ukraine, to support Ukraine, and I answered every time, Giedrych Doctrine, the meaning of Giedrych Doctrine, is not the relations between Poland and Ukraine. It's uh, the key element, it's the relations between Poland and Russia. The only way to solve, to stop the competition between Poland and Russia, the rivalry that Poland loses, keeps losing, was the independence of the countries that once were to form federation with Poland, Lithuania, and Ukraine, and Belarus. In addition to a polemic against the imperialism of Russia, an important element of Meroszewski's analysis was still the issue of ensuring, ensuring the Polish independence. And thus, we have the interest layer in the Giedrych doctrine. Perhaps it's a, it is more important than the, than the so often emphasized altruistic point of doctrine. Poland stands up for the independence of its neighbors because it's, it is associated with change for permanent independence of Poland. One of the pre war political writers from that cycle, Włodzimierz Bączkowski, expressed, expressed it in that word. We are not Ukrainophiles. Another issue is the element of altruism, the doctrine a reference to the Polish insurrectionist tradition and the spring of nations and so on. And we have two, two parallel elements, the interest and the, and the altruist tradition. The road, the next point is the road, is the transfer of the doctrine of Giedroyd to Poland. We have no, no so much time, and let me use one quote, my lovely quote from, from today's point of view, strange article, 
which was published in 1979 by Jacek Kuroń, Antoni Macierewicz, and Adam Michnik. The three authors wrote a joint article for one, of course, of underground journals. The key sentence there was, Russia, which is rolling, rolling over the nations that separate her from Poland, is and must be an imperialist state, harmful to Polish independence. This is just one example of how the doctrine of Kultura, the Gieders Doctrine, later to be called the Gieders Doctrine, became a program of the Polish anti-communist opposition in Poland, in the country, under the influence of Soviet Union, the ruling regime, the ruling regime it's po in Poland was hostile to any manifestation of interest in the peoples of the Soviet Union. The dominant in the ideology claimed that there is some Soviet people, no Ukrainians, no Belarusians, Lithuanians, talking about freedom for the Ukrainians and Lithuanians was regarded as Poland's spreading a dangerous virus among the socialist countries. Uh, the key question for us today is the adaptation of the Giedrich Doctrine in the, third, in the Third Republic of Poland. The doctrine was... Okay. The doctrine was not being accepted by, by some solemn declaration or announcement, as we say, but by political fait accompli such as the recognition of the Ukraine by Poland in uh, 1991 or the earlier Polish age during the siege of the television tower, for example, in Vilnius. Let me repeat. Two key way of transfer the unofficial, in fact, doctrine to the Third Republic of Poland. One, it's a political facts. Second, it's a kind of sacralization. I will come back to that point. Uh, for, for, I will come back to that point. On the other hand, adopting the Giedrus doctrine was also possible because no competitive ideas emerged in the democratic opposition circles in the country. It's true. The idea of ENDEC, of national democrats, was in fact in underground opposition now exists. In situations such as the Polish support of the Orange Revolution, the Giedrus doctrine cased to be not only an intellectual adventure of new elites and become the political line of the Polish government, executive line. And thus the Giedrich, and thus the Giedrich doctrine gained a political sanction by facts, by political activity. It is also worth mentioning that the doctrine also have also the a special sanction I call sacralization from the side of main feature of Polish political life after 1989. I mean Pope John Paul II. Let's use only one quote for the final of my presentation. One quote from the book wrote by John Paul II, Memory and Identity. He wrote, when Western Europe plunged into religious wars after the Reformation, Sigismund Augustus solemnly stated, I am not the king of your consciences. Indeed, 
there was no religious wars in Poland. There was a trend towards agreements and unions. On the one hand, in politics, the, the un union with Lithuania, on the other, in the life of the church, the union of the of breast. That is why the 16th, the 60, the 60th century is rightly called the golden age of Poland. You have many purely political quotes in the works of Jean Paul II. Let's summarize. The Giddish doctrine emerged not as a state doctrine, but as an as uh, intellectual current. A synthesis of several ideas that were born in the Piłsudski circle. It was, however, adapted to the post-war, World War, the second situation. It is not a classical doctrine in the political, sen in the political science sense of the word. word. The Giddish doctrine relates primarily to Polish relations with Russia, the renunciation of imperialism, and the problem of ensuring the maintaining the Polish independence. The Giddish doctrine was adopted as a kind of state doctrine, describing the principles of Polish Eastern policy after 1989. Thank you so much.